Hi, I'm Ben Chung, a biochemist turned software engineer now working at a large tech company. Some of you might know me as the author of the Ultimate Guide to the UBC BCS Second Degree Program, also known as the Bachelor of Computer Science program offered by the University of British Columbia. So today we'll be doing a deep dive on the article as well as on the program. And without further ado, let's dive into it. All right, so what is the UBC BCS program? It's also known as Integrated Computer Science, or ICS, at the University of British Columbia. So it is a 20-month second degree program designed for university graduates interested in making a career transition into computer science or information technology, or combining their own field with computer science. It is an in-person experience at the Vancouver UBC campus in Vancouver, and as part, it's part of the Faculty of Science. The fastest time you can do this program is 20 months and it has the co-op option. Do note that most students do not finish within 20 months as mo most take co-op, which is a prerequisite to improve employment prospects post-graduation. This program is designed for students and appeals to mature learners, learners and graduating, graduating university students. You have to have a degree, a previous degree, to apply to this program. Let's get into the program details. So, the UBC BCS program has two specific features. One is the bridge module, so that is a coherent set of 15 credits of upper year courses, 300 plus levels, which enables students to explore connections between computer science and another discipline. Uh, it has five objectives that follow a similar theme. You can use to explore other areas. Do note that you need to consult a program advisor, also known as a BCS dir director, by emailing him and get his approval before you can go forward with your chosen bridging modules. Another really important feature would be the co-op program. Uh, it is optional but pretty much required. Pretty much everyone does it in this program which makes you usually extend your degree away from the 20 months and you know have an extra maybe three, two, 2.5 years to three years completion time for your program. This program is very important as it allows you to keep your student status if you have student loans, etc. and allows students to gain you know, internship or work experience prior to your completion of the degree. Uh, so as an applicant to the BCS program, you also don't really need to worry about this until after you get into the program and you'll have plenty of information sessions within maybe your first two months of joining the program. Now, let's get to the next section, which is demographics. So typically, you know, this has, this chart is from uh, 2020 ish 2021 it was on the official website until it got removed around 2022 uh, so you can see that there are quite a diverse amount of individuals with different backgrounds so in this chart you know biology is 60 percent but typically my experience has been 2019 2020 a lot of stem uh, backgrounds of so biochem biology chemistry a lot of other departments as well, such as like musicians, lawyers, pharmacists, geologists, life science, etc. So you can come in pretty much expecting the program to be pretty diverse. Um, on their website, they also discuss about having the program aiming for around 50% women and 50% men. Um, I think typically the diversity and percentage and ratio is like pretty even in my core as well uh, so yeah so I think you know, one of the program strengths in my opinion is that the BCS community is very di diverse and very supportive you're able to connect with many professionals from different industries with different backgrounds and be able to learn a lot from them the application process for the BCS program involves careful preparation and uh, really two applications. You'll first need to submit applications to get into the University of British Columbia and then the Computer Science Department. They're two separate applications. The key to the successful application lies in your statement of purpose and your references. So your statement should articulate your aspirations, how the program aligns with your goals and what unique perspectives you bring to the table to the program. So how do you apply? So according to the official website, you'll need to submit these two applications, admission to UBC, CS department. So under how to, how to apply page, you can see that uh, non-UBC students, you will have to apply to this education. You have to apply to UBC through this education planner and then uh, create, apply there, pay the fee, uh, then go and create a 
UBC student service account to get your student number and then log in to apply to the application for the CS department. So we'll be going in detail for the BCS CS application, so application to the CS department shortly. But if you are a UBC student, you just apply through the UBC Applicant Service Center and it's much simpler than the Education and Planning. All right, so this would be the application for the, to get into the actual program, the computer science department. Make sure that you meet all the criteria, so bachelor degree and like a non-computer science uh, major. Uh, making sure you have like a GPA, make sure your GPA is not less than 72% because they will reject with a complete review applications with the last 30 credit of undergraduate UBC equivalent GPA at less than 72%. So you have to have a minimum of 72. Usually it says here that it's around 75% to be competitive. Uh, you need you know, the little to no programming experience, math, grade 12 equivalent, uh, communication requirement or a degree from university in which English is primary language instruction and the application fee. So, so that would be like, you know, the prerequisites and the requirements for applying for the program. And then of course, in the statement of purpose, qualification statement, your list of degrees and post-secondary two references, resume, and then your payment. Usually, I think every year is usually around, due around January 15th, so make sure you get everything in by then and don't be late. Let's talk about the BCS admissions and acceptance information. So as of September 29, 2023, we were able to secure some detailed statistics from the admission team. Uh, thanks to Eric Kim for getting this, but you can see the quick breakdown of 2023 to 2019, total number of applicants, so around 400 to 500. Uh, applicants around typically 120-ish offers to 172, it varies every year. Um, and then they, it seems like they aim for a number of accepted offers to be around you no know, 130-ish. 2020 had the largest 152 intake, but then it dropped down to 122 and 135. Zero people waitlisted, and the, this is the lowest GPA column and it's the highest last 30 credit GPA given about. So you can usually find this information in our Discord. So just gonna plug our Discord real quick, Tech Career Change. You join this Discord where a lot of former UBC BCS alumni and applicants all congregate to have a chat in the perspective. You can see UBC and you can find Pat previous statement of purposes in here. And just search the pin message all the way down plenty of information to help just join the channel and then we can uh, agree to the rules in the click over access by clicking on the check mark and then you have access to the server a lot of people here are willing to help cool so um let's go deeper into the this requirement stuff so the official ubc statistics i think the only one we got officially was that it was around 82 percent for GPA for admitted. So that would be the minimum, an average, the average GPA of those who accepted the offer and those who were similar around 83.9%. And then, uh, so the rough number around 450 applies, you can probably see somewhere here, 450 applied, 145 were accepted with a tenant yield of 90. And this is directly communicated to us by the director himself. And then we can see that recently they added the new GPA minimum. Before it was around I think 68%. Now the minimum cutoff is 72%. But to be competitive, of course, you know, higher the better for GPA. Do note that no one really had interviews from my knowledge in the past three cohorts. So 2019 to 2021, even 2022, 2020. Yeah, 2022, I'm not sure if anyone really received an interview. They just got an acceptance or rejection. And then some people have been accepted, take classes in the summer as unclassified students before to get a slight advantage. So if you take the CPSE 110, 121, and 210, you can get a little bit of an edge for applying to the UBC BCS program. And then it also allows you to skip the bottleneck. And of course, it is also not permitted to defer the BCS admission program now. So to get accepted, usually you have to start that semester, that incoming uh, cohort. All right, so 
the timeline for hearing back is usually April to June this year. So 2023, now December. So this upcoming for 2023, September, 2024, September cohort. Um, the director informed us that the program, due to the transition from their system, UVC system to Workday, application decisions would probably be a bit delayed. So probably expect you no know, admission results to maybe come out June, July. Hear back around then for September 2024 intake. You can always also just you know post in our Discord channel, or you can even post in the UBC BCS subreddit that we have uh, and stay up to date with other potential applicants and prospectives. If you have any questions, always just uh, you can always send an email to the official channels through the info email. So info email should be right here. So BCS info at CS UBC CA through the cs.ubc.ca cs.ubc.ca slash bcs application portal for this section we'll be diving into the application tips and advice so some advice that i give to numerous prospective bcs applicants for those who recently got accepted usually uh, the statement purpose is really important so every year the program gets more and more competitive into competitive to get into so the statement of purpose is an area where you can differentiate yourself further so express what exactly you want to take away from the program how the program will help you help you achieve your goals as well as how you could contribute back to the program at bcs community contribution to the bcs community is incredibly important so according to official guidance of the website in the how to apply page the bcs interpretation of admissions criteria there are usually four sections and broad criteria that you want to that are equally weighted and you should include in your reference letter and your statement purpose so the first one would be the suitability of academic background so you know by default you're 30 credit gpa which is like grades highly relevant coursework etc making sure you don't have an excessive computing background here is where that loophole comes in where if you do really strongly in CPSC 110, 121, 210, you have a slight edge. It's positive, so you might have a little bit of edge over competitors for getting in. And of course, you know, doing unusually challenging easy coursework, the waiting and stuff, etc. Uh, next is really important would be like the team, the mission teams wants to know if you have a realistic plan for success. So how well you set yourself up for success in the program, your grades, coursework, impacts this, factors us in like, have you ever done computer science before? Have you explored self, self-exploration, online coursework, um, Udemy, any, any, any like online courses, bootcamp, whatever. Uh, you have to show and demonstrate evidence that you can manage heavy workloads because it is a really tough program, especially for you are you are transitioning to a brand new field so it can be tough especially your first year and you, when you take uh, core courses like 1, 110 120 you have to you have to remember that these are 100 level courses so they are weeder courses so they are meant to you know, weed out first years and second years uh, to trim down the number of applications for you know, getting into the computer science department so making sure that you communicate your plan for success is incredibly important next one would be your motivation for the program how prepared are you to engage with the computer science and how you can you know, stay afloat during the challenging two to three year program why is bcs a good choice for you and why you're a good choice for bcs so how do you contribute back to the program uh, and finally the contribution to the community this is really important because the bcs community is a huge advantage for um, in comparison to other programs. Uh, it is a really tight-knit community of very motivated folk from various backgrounds and they want to keep it like that. So how can you help create this diverse and vibrant community and give back? Uh, provide examples, you know, maybe volunteer, etc. Uh, making sure you can show strong evidence of that would be excellent. So in this guide, I also talk about a few of these points, reference letters, you know, going over, you know, the suitability of academic background, all these points. Just make sure you give it a read over and make sure that you touch on each 
bullet point or each provide strong evidence and really be able to showcase your your contributions to all three, all four of these uh, criteria based on you know what the mission team wants. All right, so the next section would be you need two quality references. So that can discuss your abilities and personality based on the prompts given. So in this how to apply, does it say reference here? Yeah. So references have to be received by January 15th. So for this section, your references, you just submit the email and then your references will get an email with like criteria about targeted questions that will ask about you, like how like you can demonstrate evidence that you can pro can they provide evidence that demonstrates that you'll be successful in the program, like can you manage having workloads, like similar to the statement of purpose. So this is a great opportunity for you to like you know send a list of maybe maybe outline about yourself to your potential references so they have something to go off of and be able to form formally a strong supportive reference letter for you. Remember that you just need to have them be able to speak about your personality, your track record, how you can contribute to any of these four criteria, for example, contribution to the committee, and honing on on those criteria similar to your statement of purpose, uh, and be able to provide, provide information about you to the mission team that you will definitely be a, like a must have accept you must accept you to the program so that you can you know be a really good like positive impact on the program itself make sure to you know just highlight your best side uh so don't worry if your gpa isn't that good he says the mission team isn't solely based off gpa so the staff does take into account your work experience and uh, your complete application statement purpose qualification statement etc so yeah um, so if you're looking for any extra help, we do have a lot of resources built over the years. So one, one such resource is called Tech Career Change. Let's see if I can show the URL here. Uh, right here. So this is just a huge resource pool notion of anyone looking for backups for uh, we have the server, we have website, we have all these like career change programs, early student programs, resources, etc. Resume guide, and whatnot. But the most important part is your community. So you can just click the join us button. I will also drop all these links in the description below. This is the Discord again. You know, you can go to the UBC section after getting access to the server. Go to the pin comments and then you can look at all the past, some past guides, statement purposes. You can ask people to review your review your statement of purpose if you feel comfortable by draw or resume by dropping it into this resume CV review and then hopefully someone can give you some feedback. Uh, lastly, there's the RUBC underscore BCS Reddit, UBC BCS. So this is not that active as most of the activity is on Discord, but you know, you can always ask here. Someone will usually apply, reply, and then a bunch of resources in the sidebar for you too. All right, yeah, so if you need help, hopefully I can see you in one of those channels. All right, folks, and that's a wrap on the application section slash how to apply for UBC BCS. Thanks for watching and hope to see you around.